I'm often asked if we're in a housing bubble, and the short answer to that question is no, but I wanted to go into a bit more detail about why we aren't in a housing bubble right now and give some historical context to how we got to this place where home prices are up more than 20% from last year. So let's back it up to the beginning of 2020, before the madness started. So at the beginning of 2020, we were expecting a really strong year for the housing market. We were expecting prices to go up and for sales to go up. And then when the lockdowns first happened in March, we didn't know what to expect. The housing market basically shut down. Nobody was selling homes. Nobody was touring homes. But the housing market came right back as soon as people figured out how to buy homes in a safe manner, you know, wearing masks, socially distancing, all that stuff. So the housing market came back really quickly in part because mortgage rates dropped so much. Mortgage rates hit historical lows and the lower that mortgage rates are, the more affordable it is to buy a home because you're borrowing at a lower rate, your monthly housing payment will be lower. And low mortgage rates also give people the ability to refinance their homes. So even without selling your home or buying a new one, if you refinance your mortgage, you can lower your monthly mortgage payment and save on your housing costs and you have no reason to sell. So there are a lot of people who had a reason to buy a home for the first time or to buy another home or to move. Maybe they were working remotely and wanted to move to the suburbs or even across the country. So there was all this demand for homes. And a lot of people really didn't have a reason to sell a home because they could use the mortgage rates to refinance, lower their housing payment. And if they like where they were, who wants to move during a pandemic? So we saw a very large increase in demand without much increase in supply. Add on top of that the fact that there is mortgage forbearance now. So if you, during the pandemic, lost your job and couldn't afford to pay your mortgage payment, you can't refinance, but at least you don't have to pay your monthly mortgage bill for the time being if you enter into forbearance. So again, you don't have this reason to sell because you're not you know, in a desperate situation you need to sell your home. So lots of demand, not very many homes for sale, that drove up prices. And that's why we're seeing this 20% price growth. So what does that mean for the future? Is this a bubble? Will it burst? Well, bubbles have to burst from something. And usually it's that people wake up to the fact that Homes aren't worth what they thought they were worth. You find speculation when you have long periods of price growth. We've only had this really, really high price growth for as long as the pandemic has occurred. And I think most people understand that it's because of the pandemic that they shouldn't expect 20% price growth every single year for housing. I mean, I don't think anybody, I mean, at least I don't think anybody buys a home right now expecting to make a 20% return in just one year. I think people are buying homes because they genuinely want to buy homes. But if the price growth lasts for too long and people start to think that that is a new normal and that if they buy a home, they should be guaranteed this really high return, that's when you get speculation. That's when I would worry about a housing bubble. If you go back to the last housing bubble, there was really strong price growth, double digit price growth in the 2000s. We had a recession in 2001 and home prices kept going up, but we weren't in a bubble yet. We still had five more years of sustained price growth before we saw the bubble burst. And if you bought back in 2000 and held on to your home until 2015, you would have made a fine return. You would have been fine. Uh, it's only the people who bought at the peak and then were forced to sell at the bottom that really lost out, that had their lives basically ruined and oftentimes had to enter into foreclosure or bankruptcy or some other dire situation. But I would liken where we are now more to where we were in the year 2000. Because if you buy your home now, you could stay in it for five years and see lots of price growth, sell your house, and do really well. If you stay in it for longer than that, for 20, 30 years, you'll do really well. It's only when you buy at the peak of price growth that you really have to worry, or not even the peak of price growth. When you buy before prices decline, you have to worry. And I don't think there's any evidence that prices are going to go down. I mean, lumber is hard to get a hold of. We're not building new homes to meet demand. So a lack of supply again is going to lead to more price growth. I think people are going to continue to move across the country as they, you know, figure out what their new normal is. People are going to make big life changes, whether it's having a baby, starting a new job, moving to a new area, and all of that often requires moving and that's going to fuel demand for homes. So I think that 
at least for the next couple of years, we're going to continue to see prices go up. I don't see any scenario where they could possibly go down. I do think mortgage rates will increase and that will slow down demand, but it's not going to be enough because right now we're in a situation where three quarters of home buyers are facing competition when they put in an offer on a home. And if, you know, a couple people, more than a couple, if a percentage of people drop out of the housing market because it's gotten too expensive or mortgage rates are too high, there are still lots of people who want to buy homes, who are going to buy homes. And so that makes the housing market look pretty stable to me. And I don't think that we are in a bubble. So that's it. If you like this video, let me know and you can comment and let me know what other topics you want me to cover. Thanks.